Hi, it's Ken here with UAV Coach. If you own a DJI drone, then you better know about Geo Zones. That's a little corny, I know, but let's get into it. Have you ever taken your drone out to fly and being the good drone pilot that you are, you know you're in airspace that requires FAA authorization through Lance and you submit your request, you get your approval within minutes only to find out that your drone just won't start and you get a pop-up in the app that says you're unable to take off. Has that ever happened to you? If you're not aware, DJI drones utilize what's called a fly safe database that basically categorizes airspace into fenced off zones. The strictest one is called restricted zone, which will actually prevent your drone from flying regardless of if you have FAA authorization or not. They call these geo zones or geofencing because they're like fences in the sky for particular geographical areas like airports. These geo zones can be good, they can be bad, and if you only rely on them, they can land you in jail. So you probably want to pay attention to this video. So first of all, there's five primary zones. As I mentioned, the most critical is the restricted zone, which appears in red on the map. If you're in one of these zones, you'll get a warning in the app and your drone won't operate. Next is an altitude zone. These appear in gray on the map and these will limit how high you can fly in the zone. Then there's authorization zone. These are blue and will also give you a warning in the app and limit your flight. Warning zones will provide a warning in the app, but they won't limit your flight. And enhanced warning zones will give you a warning in the app and they will require you to answer some safety questions. So why does DJI have these geo zones in the first place? When the FAA is supposed to be the only entity in the US that is allowed to govern the US airspace. As the largest manufacturer of drones, DJI says that they are committed to enhancing flight safety, so they've implemented the GeoZone system to help with that. So let's start with the good. Geofencing can actually be your friend. As we discussed, the FAA has regulations about where you can or cannot fly and how high you can fly. But the FAA currently has no means of ensuring that drone pilots don't fly where they're not supposed to, or they don't fly above legal heights, etc. Drone pilots can get fined and or sent to jail if caught, but damage can still be done or people hurt or killed as a result of someone flying into the flight pattern at an airport, for example. Geofencing can help you stay out of trouble in areas like that by physically preventing the drone to fly there. The bad part is that the geo system doesn't seem to align to the restrictions imposed by regulatory agencies like the FAA, and the restricted zones sometimes extend past the intended FAA restriction zone, which can cause frustration and hassle if a drone pilot only checks the FAA UAS maps and Lance approval areas. It's possible to have FAA authorization to fly but your drone won't take off because of an erroneous geofence. DJI does provide a means to unlock geofences, but it can take time and there can be other issues as well. Now the dangerous part is relying solely on the geo system to keep you out of trouble, and this can land you in jail. As I mentioned, the DJI Geo system doesn't align perfectly with FAA restricted areas. Sometimes the system is overreaching, but sometimes it's underreaching. Just as it can put a restriction on an area that's not restricted, the fences can sometimes allow you to fly higher than you are allowed to by law. And I've seen people on older DJI models say, the controller doesn't say I'm in a no-fly zone, so I'm going to go. And that's not true, and you could get fined or go to jail if you don't know what FAA regulations are where you're flying. So let's take a look at some actual scenarios and walk through the process of unlocking a geofence zone. I'm using a DJI Air 2S, so we'll be using the DJI Fly app. If you want to see the process using the DJI Go4 app using older drones, check out the video in the link below. We're going to start in an area where there's a conflict between FAA regulations and geofence restrictions. As you can see in the app, I'm in a grid that allows automated approval up to 100 feet. So we'll submit the request. After we have that, we're good to go, right? 
Well, wrong. You can see that the DJI restricted zone extends out past the zero feet grid, so we have to submit for an unlock. The first step is to make sure you have a DJI account. Normally when you activate your drone, you sign up for a DJI account, but if you haven't, you'll need to do that to unlock a restricted zone. If you have an account, go to dji.com slash flysafe, or just enter flysafe, one word, in a Google search, and you should get there. You'll start by entering the continent and the country where you are, then scroll down to unlocking request and click on unlock a zone. If you haven't logged in, this is where you'll be prompted. At the next screen, click new unlock request. This will bring up a terms dialog box that you'll need to confirm. Then you'll be presented with two selections, custom unlocking, which allows you to select a specific area for unlock or zone unlocking, which unlocks an entire zone. If you only have FAA approval for a certain area of a zone, you may not be able to unlock an entire zone. I've had better luck using custom unlock most of the time. Your basic account information will be displayed then you scroll down until you see a section for devices, pilot type, and pilots. The first time you use the system, you'll need to add a device or multiples and add your name under pilots. When you log in the next time, your information should already be there. I'll be using the Air 2S this time, so I select that and my name, then I click next. On the next screen, you'll need to find your location. Type in a city name or airport code, then select the correct one. I'm going to use the polygon and draw the basic location where I'm flying, but you can use a circle or enter specific GPS coordinates. Then you'll enter the time range, the altitude, the reason, and any uploads that will help justify the unlock. In this case, I've received FAA authorization, so I'm going to take a screenshot of that and upload it as justification. Then click submit and you just wait. In some cases, you'll be notified quickly, and other times you may have to wait a while. This is where pre-planning can be of utmost importance. If you're doing a job for a client, the last thing you want to do is be sitting there with a drone that doesn't work, waiting for the notification that your request has been accepted. Or worse, it gets rejected for some reason, and you have to start all over. You can get these unlocking licenses ahead of time, so it's worth it to check the GeoZone map at the same time you're checking the FAA UAS map and getting your Lance approval if needed through an app like DroneUp or Aloft's Air Control. Once you get noticed that your unlocking request has been accepted, now you have to import the license to the aircraft. This is done through the DJI Fly app in our case. If you have an older model like the Mavic 2 Pro, you'll use the DJI Go4 app. Check out the video link below if you want to see how unlocking is done through that app. With the app open, you press on the three dots at the top right, and under the Safety tab, scroll down until you see Unlock GeoZone. Press there, and it will take you to this screen, which shows Account Unlocking Licenses and Aircraft Unlocking Licenses. If you're using the RC N1 controller and your phone, you'll probably see a license listed under Account Unlocking Licenses. If you're using the RC controller with the screen built in, you may not see your new license listed. That's because you have to have internet access to get the license uploaded to your account. On the RC controller, you have to swipe down from the top of the screen to get to the settings screen where you'll find the Wi-Fi button. You'll need to connect to Wi-Fi to get the license uploaded to your account. If you're not near a Wi-Fi connection, you can connect to a mobile hotspot if your phone or tablet is equipped. In this case, that's exactly what I had to do. Once you have a Wi-Fi connection, go back to the license screen, and you may need to hit the refresh button at the top of the screen to get your license to show here. In my case, I had an older license still displayed, which states not within valid period. Once I press the refresh, you can see that the unlocked areas segment changes from test to unnamed one, which is what my new request was called. Now, if I press import to aircraft, you can see that this new license is now displayed under aircraft unlocking licenses, and you can see that the license is valid. The last step is to activate the license by tapping the slider button. When you do, you'll get a pop-up and you have to agree to a couple safety questions, that you're qualified and that you assume full liability. Tap each of those boxes, then press agree, and you're golden. You can now fly your drone in the airspace where you've already been approved by the FAA. I still had this warning notice that the aircraft entered a restricted zone and to exit promptly, but the drone was working and I had FAA approval, so I wasn't concerned about it. 
I was careful because if you recall, the original warning said that return to home can be affected. If you open up the map from within the DJI Fly app, you'll see the area where your license was approved for. However, it doesn't appear that it's restricting me to just that area, but I think that's why the warning notice stays active. Now the license does limit me to the altitude that I was approved for, which is 100 feet. The app and the controller will not allow me to go any higher than that. That's a good thing in my view because if you're in an approach path for a runway, this can be very critical. As a side note, anytime you're flying a drone in an area under a flight path, be cautious of wake turbulence, which is the violent twisting airflow that comes off of a jet powered aircraft. Wake turbulence travels behind and downward from the airplane and can cause you to lose control of your drone. And that's a bad thing. So we just walked through the process of GeoZone unlocking when in a restricted zone. Let's quickly walk through what happens in the other categories. In my next location, I'm in an authorization zone. Again, in order to unlock this zone, you need to have a network connection. So if you're using the RC controller, you'll need to connect to a hotspot. Now, when you press unlock, you'll have to enter your phone number and click agree. Then you'll receive a text from DJI with a six digit code to enter. This is because authorization zones require you to have a DJI account that's verified. When you enter the code, you'll get a pop-up with a few more agreement questions. Are you qualified? Do you assume liability? and agree to upload DJI device hardware information so they can confirm and verify your drone. When you select those three, you'll see the confirm button. Press that and you're ready to go. As you can see here, overlapping zones can get a bit confusing. The app now says I'm in an altitude zone and it's limiting my flight to 196 feet, but I'm in a 100 foot grid per the FAA and I only have authorization up to 100 feet. This is a perfect example of where you need to be aware of the fact that the geo zones and the FAA authorization zones or grids can be different. The FAA is the authority in the US, but now that we've unlocked the authorization zone, we can take off. Next, we'll move to an enhanced warning zone. In these zones, you'll get a pop-up to agree to assume liability for flying in the area, but once you agree, you can take off without any further actions. What's interesting to me is that when I zoom out on the DJI map in the Fly app, it shows that I'm still within the boundary of the blue authorization zone, but the app doesn't indicate that. Moving just a little bit up the road, we're still in the enhanced warning zone according to the map, but again, the app doesn't indicate that and we have no restrictions on launching our drone. Here, we're in a 200 foot grid, so we have FAA authorization up to 200 feet. Last, we'll move to the least restrictive warning zone. In this zone, we simply get a warning flag stating that our target flight area is a warning zone and to fly with caution. We also have FAA authorization up to 400 feet now. If you're in the St. George area, you might want to stop by here and see the locally famous license plate tower. It's a 60 foot tower made with license plates from all over the US and Wyoming Jane holds the top spot. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for following along. I hope this helps you understand the DJI Geo Zones a little better and how to go about unlocking them if you're in an area that requires it. As I mentioned, these zones are different than the FAA authorization zones that are available through the Lance approval process. Make sure you plan ahead so that you don't get stuck trying to unlock a zone when time is critical. Also remember that just because the DJI Fly app says that takeoff is permitted, that doesn't mean that you don't have to get approval from the FAA or authorization through the Lance process. If you feel like you could use some help to become more comfortable flying your drone, don't forget that UAV Coach has hands-on flight training with certified flight instructors. And if you're in Utah, I'm your guy. So from all of us here at UAV Coach, we wish you blue skies and safe flying. We'll see you next time.